Welcome back our audience, um, our listeners, and also those that read and follow in speech arts to another collaboration here with the FIU Radcliffe Art and Design Incubator House under CARDA at Florida International University. I want to welcome in Ray Elman, the heartbeat of this project. How are you? Ah, uh, I've never, I've been called a heartthrob, but never a heartbeat. <laughs> the heartbeat of this project every week. Uh yeah. And, and, you know, this collaboration started, what, 10 weeks ago? We were on number 10 or more. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but this, is, this project's been going on for a while. So I just want to acknowledge, you know, the efforts that Ray Elman puts into this. Um, we're quick to criticize, never to recognize. So I'm recognizing you, Ray, um, during this session and always. So I hope you like my holiday decor behind me, um, right. getting ready for the season. And we have an interesting guest. Um, from Zimbabwe, a very interesting, you know, far away place, Tamari Kudita. Did I say it right? I, it sounds right to my ear. <laughs> so she's she's 27 years old um, and quite fascinating. She was inspired, um, if, if I'm correct again, um, during high school by none other than Pablo Picasso. So let's kick it off with that. Well, when I asked her who her um, primary uh, role models and influencers are. The, the first person she mentioned was Picasso. And uh, you can't pick anybody body better than that. And one of the things we talk about in, in the interview uh, that we published in In Speecho Arts is that Picasso was conversely influenced by African art. So um, one of his br major breakthrough paintings is, and I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, the Mademoiselle of the Mademoiselle of Avignon. And in that uh, kind of cubist painting, he, the, the faces of the women are actually based on African masks. So uh, in my own artwork, in my own art practice, as people say today, um, I, in the 1980s, I did a whole series of um, large scale, like five by six foot paintings that were based on masks of different indigenous cultures, like the Kwaki Udal Indians in the, or the Kwaki Udals, I should say, in the Northwest coast of the United States, but a whole variety of African uh, masks um, that, that have, in fact, I have some hanging on my wall right, right next to me here that I've bought over the years. And um, so she talked about uh, how his, uh, the variety of what he does and especially his um, treatment of women in his work uh, influenced her. But um, I think one of the telling things about Tamari, uh, first of all, she's 27 years old. She is so articulate and thoughtful and deep in her approach to her work that uh, I, I was really blown away with her and I couldn't wait to meet her. She, she lives in Harare, Zimbabwe, which is the capital of Zimbabwe, but she came over here to the United States for her first trip uh, this week, this past week to attend a world conference of women photographers, which was at the uh, Paris Art Museum, Miami uh, but also because she had an opening reception on November 20th, 2021 for uh, her uh, exhibition of very large scale portraits that um, is part of a Victorian Africa series that she's done. Um, and she calls herself a photo activist, which uh, because She's addressing uh, issues from the colonial era. And in, in, in this case, uh, she has, for the most part, very dark skinned African women um, wearing colonial garb, Victorian garb, 
uh, in various compositions, sometimes out in fields, sometimes um, in front of uh, huts from, the, from that era and, and doing various things. And they're very dynamic. Uh, you can see them on our website um, if you uh, review the interview that we did with her. Um, and uh, so she's, you know, when I compare her to millennials that I meet in this country, she's like on a different planet. So, you know, we've talked about her being kind of a young prodigy, if you want to call it that, right? Kind of the younger ones out there inspired by, you know, Pablo Picasso. And what what is your takeaway from kind of her work? I know, you know, we mentioned that her current exhibition opened on November 20th and it's at the Betsy Hotel on Miami Beach. Um, so what, what is your takeaway from kind of her journey? Where, where do you think she's headed? I, well, I, I believe that she'll continue to find themes that she's going to express and that have a political orientation. She's um, from a mixed background. Her uh, part of her relatives were Boers. I don't, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, Boers, B-O-E-R. Uh, the, the, uh, I think those were the Dutch colonists um, in Africa. And, and then on the other side, uh, you know, she has African, uh, she's a descendant of Africans. Uh, so she has, um, she's addressing uh, the themes that come out of that mixed background. And I think she'll continue to do that. One of the other elements about uh, Tom, Tamari is that she's um, very sophisticated in her approach to photography. She started off uh, with pinhole photography, which is basically a hole in a box and it's a uh, camera obscura where you really can't see what you're doing. It's not like you got a lens that you can adjust or anything. And so she learned from a very kind of primitive way of doing things. Um, and so she has really great fundamentals, but the, the work that's in, with the exception of one piece, uh, the work, it was all shot in a studio and she did a combination of uh, using Photoshop to manipulate the images um, and doing uh, studio photography. So for example, in one case, uh, I think there's five or six women in the image, but it's all the same woman. And she had the woman in different poses and she added them into the, into the overall composition using uh, Photoshop. Is there anyone else um, in this kind of like the space that she's part of that compares to her at all? Or is she kind of one of these unique artists that has found her niche? That's a great question that unfortunately <laughs> I can't answer in any <laughs> intelligent way. However, I would assume that because of her background, that there aren't many people that can draw on the genuine inspiration that she has to be doing this work. So that's number one. Um, I, 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 other people come to mind, like we have a video interview on the website, one of our earlier ones with a woman named Fiorelli Baez. And she was born on the Haitian uh, Dominican border came to the United States where she was very young, grew up in Miami, um, went to, I think, four different schools, ultimately went to Cooper Union in New York. And she's a painter, but she's been, uh, some of the paintings that she exhibited at the Paris Art Museum in Miami included very large scale images of women, uh, of, Afri of uh, African-American women during the, um, I think the, 17th century, maybe 18th century in the United States, and how they were forced to shave their heads because they weren't supposed to look beautiful. And so their response was to uh, create these elaborate head scarves. And in her painting, Fiorelli yes. mm -hmm. Baez puts all these um, uh, image uh, uh, symbols uh, of, of uh, oppression and things like that into the, into the head scarves. Um, so it was a, a, a terrific exhibition, but it, 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 it sort of is a, would be a nice companion 
piece with um, with Tamari's uh, images. Uh, so that's one thing that comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, he seems very um, accomplished so far. I know I read and listened to the interview that, you know, she was awarded, I believe it was the Sony Photographer's um, recognition. So, you know, a young artist, up and coming, current exhibit at the Betsy Hotel, uh, making an impact, right, globally with, with her images. Is there anything else um, that you want to add? Any other takeaway from her? Well, I, I, I'm not quite sure when the exhibit's coming down. I think the Betsy owns some of the the, the photographs, so I, I believe they're going to continue to hang there, maybe in perpetuity in one place or another, but not necessarily all together in the main gallery at the Betsy. Um, so I know they're going to be up during Art Basel week or Art Week. Yeah, that's and, coming up. And, and that starts uh, the first week of December. So uh, I would urge people to go over and see them. Well, thank you so much, Ray Elman, on another session of this collaboration between Inspecho Arts and the Florida International University Radcliffe Art and Design Incubator. Wishing you a great holiday season, Ray. You, you too, Maggie. We have to stop meeting this way. We have to find... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we've met in person before. You came over to the Radcliffe to use right. one of our, our right. equipment. <laughs> once. <laughs> once, but... once. Someday, someday we'll be hanging out in a bar together and say, remember when? <laughs> Maybe at the Betsy Hotel. Oh, there's a good idea. <laughs>